Tanma Morning Talk Show, a fresh take on what's happening in the global cannabis and psychedelic space. Your power shot of cannabis and psychedelics knowledge, featuring the industry's hottest experts, thought leaders, trendsetters, influencers, and celebrities. I'm your host, Melissa. Join me and our esteemed guests as we reflect on the current and future climate of the global cannabis and psychedelics industry. Today's guest is a South American cannabis pioneer with two successful and growing businesses under his belt in both Ecuador and Colombia. A man who has his finger on the pulse of the burgeoning Latin American cannabis market Mr. Andres Alvarez. So, so Andres, let's uh, talk a little bit about your backstory. Can you tell me a little bit about your personal and professional journey? What What is your cannabis story? How did you get into this industry? Okay, it's, it's very curious how I entered to the cannabis industry. I was the CEO in Colombia of a coffee company. You know, Colombia is very knowing for the whole world for the coffee. So it was a very interesting because there was coffee mixed with medicinal mushrooms. So the Colombia knows how to do coffee and we have a shareholders from Israel that knows a lot about the mushrooms. So we tried to mix. That was in the 2015 rolling. Um, at the end of the 2007, 2016, like, Colombia started with the cannabis industry. So the Israel shareholders knows a lot about uh, cannabis. You know, uh, Israel uh, is, a, is a potential in this industry. They have a lot of uh, quality and um, uh, scientific resources to do that. So they told me, hey, Andres, uh, we want to turn the wheel and start to develop in the new industry. At that moment, I know zero about cannabis. Zero, zero, zero. You know, Colombia is uh, famous, unfortunately, for the, for the marijuana. So there was something totally new, totally new. So we, uh, I start to learning about the industry. I start to apply for the licenses in Colombia. And I think we were one of the first companies in Colombia to have all the licenses, maybe the fourth or fifth company in Colombia. And I will start learning about it. But at the end of the 2018, there was a uh, troubles between the shareholders, the Colombian part and the and the Israel part. So at that moment, in March of 2019, I decided to start my own company. That's how premium oil born. Aha. I tell I tell, I was I was reading a, a a book of I don't remember the the name of the book. I was talking about Standard Oil. Standard Oil was the company of Rockefeller has about the, the oil industry at the beginning of the, the century, the last century. So the first name I, I thought was Standard Oil, but this, the name Standard uh, didn't like me so much, so I changed it to Premium Oil. Premium Oil says a Colombian cannabis industry. That's the name of the company, and that's that's how I started in this business. Amazing, amazing. And, and what was that journey like for you, um, starting a, a business from scratch? Um, how did the company evolve over the years and, and where is the company now? It has been very difficult because when we start, there was a lot of speculation about the industry. I think that one of the mistakes that the companies made in Colombia was thin in quantity and no quality. The first companies, all of them, thought the, the size matters. So they start with uh, 10 hectares, 20 hectares, 
30 hectares, more big, better. So when the industry uh, start, when we put our, our feet on the land, we realized that was, it was not so easy that, like we thought. And a lot of companies broke, a lot, a lot, a lot of companies. So when I start, I know how to start. So the philosophy of premium oil was to start small, very, very, very small, thinking in quality and not quantity. That's, I think that's one of the first uh, pillars of the company. And after that, it was very difficult because the, the people was very, I don't know how to say, reluctant to the cannabis industry. You say cannabis, why cannabis? That's a drug. Uh, always uh, think in marijuana terms. And say, no, 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 no. Uh, cannabis has a lot of uh, medical uh, purposes. So change that mind of the people, I think, is the more difficult of this industry. You need to educate your, your market. So uh, more in Colombia, the, we have a black pass in, in the drug. So the people think, no, oh, marijuana, no, I want another business. I don't want to invest in that industry. I think it's a learned theft industry. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was actually reading an article recently about that and, you know, um, that there is there is so much potential, especially for the Colombian market in the cannabis industry. But there's always that stigma. So how, how do you go about educating people and trying to remove that stigma, especially in a country with a history like Colombia? Yes, I think that the first thing that all companies need to do uh, is to educate the, the, the market. Premium Oil is starting a new business. We are developing our own brand. Uh, the first thing that we are making in social media is education. It's the first thing that we are doing. Because if you don't have that education, the, the market doesn't go to get your products, it's so easy. So, and the, the government, the Colombian government is working on it too. We are, we are new president. Uh, it's a president that wants to support the cannabis industry. I think it's a good moment to, to the Colombia industry, cannabis industry. And uh, they have all the companies because they are, that, that's education. When a president of your country talks about the cannabis industry, we need to support the, the, the farmers. Uh, I think that all the companies uh, get advantage of that. Absolutely. And I think it really helps when you have somebody in power who's on your side and helping you in that way and educating the public about that. It really helps to move things forward. Um, so that's that's very exciting. Yes, that's right. That's that's very exciting. I, I, I think that Colombia has a great future in the cannabis industry. We we made mistakes at the beginning. We are learning of that mistakes. And go to the next step, for example. Now we are thinking in the recreational uh, cannabis, adult use, the adult use of the cannabis. And I think that this is going to be a huge step in the industry because in South America, only Uruguay is the country that has a, a legal framework for the adult use of the cannabis. If Colombia can be the second country in, in, in South America to have a legal framework to the adult use of cannabis, I think is going to be a game changer in the, in the, in the region, in the, in the country. That's a good news for, for the cannabis industry. And you can see this in all parts of the world. In all parts of the world now, we are in, in German. We, we, we see that Germany is going through this 
this legalization to the adult use of the cannabis. Uh, United States is working in a federal framework, uh, legal framework for the industry. And I think that maybe in the five, 10 years, uh, the cannabis is going to be a huge industry. That's what I'm here. That's why I'm working on this business. In this moment, it's very hard, very, very, very hard. Always you talk about cannabis, everybody see, uh, see you like, what? What are you going to do? So, but in, in five, maybe 10 years, I think that it will be like coffee. Uh, the Colombian coffee is known in every part of the world for the quality, and I, the same thing is going to happen with the cannabis. Amazing, amazing, and I look forward to that. And I, I think I think that you're right. You know, as soon as kind of big nations like I mean, even Germany, that legalization will mean a big thing for Europe, and I'm sure. Um, in, if Colombia legalizes for, for REC, that will have a snowball effect on the rest of South America, right? Um, do you think that is something that would happen, that would create a snowball effect and the rest of the, the countries in South America would start to legalize REC as well? What, what, is, the, what is the kind of uh, tone um, or thoughts going forward for Latin America? Okay, you see every every day uh, a new country, a new state legalize, legalize the, the cannabis. And that's what it, that's what is happening in South America. For example, I was I was living in Ecuador uh, like uh, two years. I have another uh, consulting company in, in, in Ecuador. So I have the opportunity to to see the market in first place. Ecuador, for example, is working on the only in CBD. They are not have a TAC legal framework, but I know they are working on that. And uh, you, you see, it's difficult how I said before, because uh, uh, more in a country like Ecuador, where uh, there is a lot of people with very conservative uh, set mind, but we are making baby steps, baby steps. We are making baby steps. Uh, in no uh, close, no, I would say in no very near future, no, in a very near future, we are going to see more people acquiring cannabis products. Amazing, amazing. And even baby steps, it's a step in the right direction, right? So that's that's important. And, you know, you you mentioned Ecuador and your time there and your other consulting businesses. That's the Green Services Group, correct? Can you tell tell us a little bit about that and what that company is doing and uh, what, what your time in Ecuador was like? Yes, when we started in the cannabis industry, I saw a lot of uh, consulting companies in Colombia working in supporting uh, the people that that want to to start this business so in 2018 ecuador start with the legalization of the cannabis only cbd less than one percent of thc sorry less than one percent of thc so my wife and i decide to travel to ecuador to move to ecuador to start this new company it's called green services group Green Services Group uh, is based on Ecuador, and the mission of this country is to help people, to help uh, companies to develop his business plan based on cannabis, of course. Green Services Group is 100% a cannabis consulting company, 100% in all the aspects of the business, from import the seeds, from export, uh, developing the business plan. Why? Because there is, there's a lot of people that you know that maybe have the money, maybe wants to start the business, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to start. Okay, I know the cannabis industry is a good business. I know that. But what's the first step? What I have to do? What I need to do? So that's what uh, Green Services Group helps these people this but again we saw the same that in colombia the people say no cannabis no i don't know how to do that i don't know if it's legal so uh, we come back to the educational uh, aspect of the business but 
For example, we are working on a few companies on Ecuador that we apply for licenses in, in companies and uh, we are we get the licenses for all, all clients um, we expect to uh, start to develop this business the next year so maybe uh, one wants to give the big step the, i want to export now i want to export 10 hectares of dry flour for example it's not so easy i say it's not so easy uh, don't make the same mistakes that Colombia made uh, four or five years ago. You need to start small, you need to uh, fresh the market. I think this is, this is very peculiar because it's one of the business that you, you need to have your, your, your market first, but you don't have product to show. When you when you go to a, a fair, a commercial fair, everyone has a product that you can show. You get okay, this is my product. This is what I have. But this business is different. You you are going to to talk with a, a potential customer and say, hey, I have uh, I don't know five hectares of of land, and I'm going to grow cannabis. And a lot of the person say, okay, show me something. No, I, I, I don't have the cultivation yet. So give me four or five months and I'm going to show you my product. So all the things you need to have in mind when you start this business, all the things, that's what I say to my customers when they ask me about this industry, say it's a good industry. There's no doubts about that. But you need to be very smart. You need to be very patient, very, very, very patient in this business because it's not so easy to put a seed on the ground, wait for maybe three, four, five months, and explore. It's not so easy. I think I think that's great advice because I think, as you said, you know, a lot of people think, "Wow, the cannabis industry it's it's booming, it's growing." I I want to get in there, but they they don't really know what it entails and it is very different as you said from other businesses it's it's a, a whole different ball game right uh, is there any other advice you would give to somebody who's thinking oh the cannabis industry sounds interesting i would like to get involved uh, any other advice that you would share with somebody wanting to kind of start a business or get involved in some way i say look at the news look at the world look for example united states look for example germany I was in Berlin uh, in July of this year. Uh, the, I think that maybe this market is going uh, light years from us because they are another mindset. So we need to learn about that kind of mindset. We need to change our mindset about. That's what I say. You say, hey, no, I don't want cannabis. But while you are saying that, is something, is someone earning a lot of amount of money with cannabis in Los Angeles, in Europe, here in, in Colombia, there is uh, maybe four or five companies that are making money uh, with this industry. So I invite them to change the mind, think different, think out of the box. I know that cannabis uh, in the past was a drug, but the the plan, the cannabis is not bad. The bad thing is what we do with the plant. That's the bad thing. But the, the, the flower has a lot of medical uh, success in all parts of the world with a lot of scientists uh, that support the data support the experiment. We saw you can go to YouTube and saw a lot of people that have benefits from the from the cannabis in, in, in your health, improve your health. So that's what I say with someone asking me about the, the, the cannabis and the cannabis industry, of course. Absolutely. And I, I think that's very true. And I think it is very important to have these global conversations. It's important to know what is happening 
in different parts of the world. And of course, um, going to events like ICBC Berlin, I was also there uh, in July, yeah. it was amazing. But um, I think that it's really important because you get to meet people from all different countries. Everyone has a different story to tell and um, a different story with how their country is kind of dealing with legalization. So it's very interesting. And I think I think that's very good advice. <laughs> I, I, you know what, Melissa, this is a very changing business. Uh, you need to, to see the news every day, every hour, all the time. In my Twitter account, uh, I follow a lot of business people from cannabis, influencers from cannabis, because all days, all days is changing. A new country, a new, for example, what Colombia, when Colombia started with this business, it was only legal the, the, the oil extract, the extraction industry. There was no space for the flower, for the dry flower. There was no space for that industry. Only when all countries, uh, another countries, for example, Ecuador, legalized the cannabis, um, admit the export of dry flower, all the industry will start to pressure the government to say, hey, we are, we was the first, we were one of the first, but now we are the last because there's a lot of companies working on the and, and allow the export of dry flour. So, so the Colombian government has to change that. And to change a law is not from one day to another day. It takes maybe months, maybe it takes years. And that years, all and other countries has working, working on the industry and take advantage of that. So you need to, to, to be checking the news all day and changing your business plan. I remember if I compare my business plan now from my business plan from 2019, it's totally different, totally, totally different. So I, I was thinking it's very curious because in other industry, yes, all is moving, all is changing, is that. But I think that the cannabis industry in a more higher rate than another industry. Completely. I completely agree with you. And we have to constantly change and evolve with the industry. And talking about changing and evolving, what do you see for the future of cannabis industry in Colombia, in Ecuador, in Latin America? Um, where, where do you see maybe the next five to 10 years or even the next year, you know, so much can change. So, so what do you predict? What are some of your predictions for the future? The only, the only thing that I can predict is that cannabis is going to be a very successful in this industry. How? I don't know. I don't know how is going to be the path to go to that goal. I don't know that. So we need to be very, very attentive to the market. We need to, to how I said before, the, the news every day, how Mother Luther King say, I have a dream. Uh, I dream with all uh, South America uh, working together. Is, I think it's a very uh, almost impossible dream because we are so different. Maybe you can see that in other parts of the world, like Europe. But here in Colombia, for uh, here in, in South America, for example, Colombia and Ecuador are very close. We are neighbors, yeah. but we are so different, so different. We have a different culture, uh, the mindset is different. So, for example, Brazil. Brazil uh, is, uh, I think, is the 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 bigger economy in South America, but they told another language. They told another language. They are so different now for us, but every country is working. Every country is working. We have the case, for example, from Argentina. I think it's, Argentina is going to be, uh, uh, is going to have a good market why? Because Argentina has something that a few people know about that. I don't know if you have ever heard about the pigs. The pigs is like... Uh, yes, yes. 
the peaks uh, allows Argentina to work with the European Asia Agency to homologate his product. So I think that all of us have to have an eye and in, in Argentina, because I think they're going to be uh, 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 the power to have to go to go have your produce in Europe. You know, uh, yes, uh, that's interesting that you mentioned it because I have been seeing Argentina a lot in the in the news lately. You know, in terms of cannabis, so I'm very interested to see how that unfolds in the future. Um, good to good to keep an eye on them, right? <laughs> I think that Argentina in this November, in this month, they have to regulate the cannabis, the the legal framework. There is a law, there is a law that meet the penalize the cannabis use, but they need to regulate it. So in this month, I think they have the the deadline to work on it. Uh, there is a lot of people waiting what is going to happen with, with Argentina because I think that is going to be the getaway to the European market. Amazing. And I'll be very interested to see how that plays out. Uh, you know, talking about um, other markets also getting involved, and I know with the Green Services Group, you, you also are involved with advising and helping foreign investors you know, uh, into the medical cannabis business in South America. So have you noticed a lot of interest from other countries that are wanting to get involved in the South American cannabis market? Are a lot of people kind of knocking at the door and wanting to kind of invest? Yes, for example, um, when the cannabis industry started in uh, 2017, I will say before, a lot of companies, especially from Canada, arrives to Colombia to develop a, a business plan uh, to develop his, his business in the country. Uh, because we have, uh, Colombia has a lot of advantage in compared to other countries, for example, the weather, the, 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 the people that knows about the land. We have a, a lot of uh, agriculture uh, knowledge. So th these companies arise to Colombia with, how I said before, thinking in quantity and in quality, and a lot of people lost a lot of money. A lot. So if you ask to someone that start his business in the 2017, 2018, they're going to say, you know what? I don't, I, I don't want to know nothing about Colombia. I lost money. Uh, I think it's a no good country to to start the business, but I, I say we, we, we made mistakes. We start the business thinking that we are, all of us, we are going to be rich from one day to another day, and it's not so easy. So when we start to, to making baby steps, hey, hey, you know what? This is not a, a business, how you say, that I'm going to be rich from morning to, to later. No, it's not going to be. This is an industry hard. The same that, that other. You need to start small. You need to have a business plan. You need to have a good numbers. You need to have a realistic uh, numbers. So now there, you, you see uh, another group of investment that is going to arrive to Colombia in this new era for, for say, for say in, in, in that way, in the cannabis industry. And now with the president that say, I'm going to support this industry, I'm going to legalize the adult use of the cannabis. I think the, the, the industry, the, the investors, Okay, you know, Colombia is not so bad how you say. I think that it's a good opportunity and there is a, a good, uh, we can make money and we can help a lot of people in Colombia. That's, that's all another aspect of the business, of the cannabis industry that I like. Uh, you can help a lot of people, from farmers, from patients, a lot of people you can help in, in the way you earn money. I think that that's the mission of all the companies. Make money by help people to do that. 
Ecuador, for example, where the, when I say, if you want to do the things faster, go to Ecuador, because the legal framework of Ecuador is very easy. It's very, very easy. It's, uh, it's not so, there is no so regulation like in Colombia. So you want to start fast, go to Ecuador. You want, for example, work in the THC industry, go to Colombia. Very interesting, very interesting. And I, I really like that. I think that that is a big part of the industry is also helping people. Of course, we all want to make money, but this is an industry that can actually help people. And that is so important. There is a lot of resources in Colombia. There is a lot of resources, but almost the 50% of the population is, is, is poor, that doesn't have the resources. So you can help out. When you see that, when I start in this business uh, in 2017, I have the opportunity to visit Corinto. Corinto in Cauca, in Colombia, is, I think it's one of the uh, places where most marijuana are. So you, you, see, you I saw the farmers the, in, the, in his eyes that they want to, to do another thing because they are working illegally all his life, all his life. Now, when we talk with these people, he say, I, I, I want to do another thing. I, I want to do this because I, I love this, but legally. So they saw a big opportunity. They saw a, a big opportunity to do the things in the right way. Unfortunately, mm, there was a lot of problem with guerrilla groups, uh, there was a peace process that didn't finish well. So unfortunately, a lot of these people comes to the guerrilla groups. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult, but you know that there is an opportunity to help people. There is an opportunity to, to take these people and say, come on, work with something that you know how to do it, because you know how to do it. You you have been working in this all, all his life, so you can help us. And we are going to give you the tools to do it in the right way. Why we are going to do the same, but well, with quality, with certifications, we need to have some norms. We have to, you know, for example, if you want to export to, to Germany, you have to eat, have EUGMP. So in the EU GMP, it's not so easy to take the seeds on the land and, for, and wait for four or five months. No, you need to have a very high standards of quality. So I think that we can work together, together the, the investors and the farmers, because the investors have the money and the farmers have the knowledge. And I think that's so smart, too, because, you know, you're already kind of uh, solving a problem that uh, to look for farmers or to train people to be farmers, you already have those farmers. So it's just about kind of giving them, as you said, the tools to do things the right way. So I think that's really amazing. And I know um, I read that the industrial hemp industry is quite big in Ecuador um, with farmers. Is is that true? Uh, what, what does that kind of industry look like, the hemp industry in Ecuador? Ecuador has a big advantage uh, if you compare to Colombia. For example, Ecuador hasn't have uh, guerrilla groups. There is no guerrilla groups in Ecuador. So I think it's uh, when you are talking with uh, investors about a uh, cannabis industry that you want to start, the first thing that uh, the, almost 99% of them ask is the, is the security. Is the secure place? There is no guerrilla groups. Uh, so this is the first thing. Ecuador hasn't had the problem. So I think that is something that Ecuador needs to explore. Another thing that Ecuador has advantage compared with Colombia is, for example, that Ecuador has uh, is a dollar country. The the current is the dollar. So you don't have um, devaluation problems. You don't have inflation problems. 
the inflation in Ecuador was the smaller in all the, the region, in all. When you see, for example, Argentina with almost the 50% of the, of the peso devaluation, and they expect that maybe can uh, reach the 100% devaluation, the investors say, hey, wait a moment. Because if I invest uh, $100,000 today in one year, there is nothing about that money. That problem, Ecuador doesn't have that problem. So they need to, to explode that, that advantage compared to other countries. Another advantage that, for example, Ecuador is the, is in the Ecuador. It's in the middle of the, of the Earth, the middle of the planet. And for all the people that know about this, this, this business, know that the hours of sun that you have is very important for the plant. In Ecuador, you have 12 hours of hours every day, almost, almost in Colombia too. But Ecuador, maybe in, in, in Colombia, you have, uh, you can cultivate the cannabis three or four times in the year. In Ecuador, maybe you need three, only three. I don't know. We are working on that. We are working <laughs> on that. So this is uh, an experiment. Every step that you, 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 you give, you need to wait to give the another one. So error, that, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and it's interesting to see, uh, you know, as you said, you know, Ecuador and Colombia are neighbors, but there are so many differences. So it's very interesting to see how different it is from region to region, um, even when you're so close by. So that's 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 very interesting. And, you know, of course, medical cannabis is legal in the large majority of South America. Correct. So um, what do you think the significance is of that, you know, of the medical cannabis legalization and what would it mean for kind of a widespread recreational uh, legalization? Uh, what would that what kind of impact would that really have on South America as a whole? I think that the cannabis is going to help to grow the economy. Definitely. Definitely is going to, to grow all the economy, not only in Colombia and Ecuador, from all the from all the region. All the countries uh, is going to benefit of the the cannabis, not only in the medical aspect, in the economy. They're going to help to reduce the to not to improve the the employee rates, the the government uh, is going to have more money through taxes, for example. So I need I think that the cannabis is an industry that everybody needs in this moment. In Ecuador, for example, like Ecuador is a, a dollarized country. They, they live from the, the things that they can export. They need to export goods in order to have dollars in his economy. So they need to export uh, definitely the, 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 the plant. They need to grow with the cannabis industry. And not only in Ecuador, in Colombia, in Argentina, in Brazil, in Peru, in Chile, in all South America, we need to do that. We need to improve the, the employee rates, the taxes, the health of the people, the health, because it's not only about money and economy, it's about the health people. In Colombia, uh, the, the cannabis industry start, the person who start in the Congress with this business say it's not about money, it's about to help the people, to improve his health, his, the health of all the countries. We just start to discover all the benefits that the plant has. We just have to start the, 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 in the in less than 100 years. That in, in terms of history is nothing. It's just around the corner. So we just start, but we need to think faster. We need to think faster because there is another economist that are thinking faster. So if we want, to convert in a potential cannabis industry in South America, for example, 
we need to be quick. We need to uh, improve the legal framework. We need to to improve the bureaucratic. Uh, when you when you want to export, you need to go over a lot of paper, a got a lot of bureaucratic process that all Latin America country has. So we need to work on it. We need to work on it, but I'm pretty sure that we are going to go over that and we are going to, the industry is going to, to success. When? I don't know. I expect that. I would like to be the next year, but it's not that's, so easy. That is not a question, right? <laughs> that's right. I don't know where. I don't know when, but I expect that maybe in the five years. In the five years, I think it's going to be a cannabis boom, not only in South America, in all the world, in all the world. Absolutely, absolutely. I tend to agree with you on that. And, you know, as you said, the global cannabis market is extraordinarily competitive and cutting edge, cutting edge. And, you know, if you don't move quick enough, somebody else is going to do it quick enough. So um, do you, what, what do you think the role of uh, South America will be in, the, in let's say five years, do you think that will be one of the top kind of cannabis producers? Um, do you think, what do you think about that? You want to be competitive in this industry? I, I have only one word, quality. You need quality. You have good quality from the beginning. You, you don't need to have, I want to AUGMP a certification to export to Germany, no. You need to think, I want to do the things with quality. You think in terms of quality, AOGMP is going to be part of the process. It's going to be easy. You need to think in that way. Uh, there is a lot of companies in Colombia working, how you say. Uh, for example, I know that it is more than 2,000 companies in Colombia that has a license, any kind of licenses, seeds, and non co co-opted licenses, 2,000, that was in May of this year. Maybe now we have maybe 3,000 co companies with, with licenses. That is a lot of companies working. That is a lot of companies wants to, to make money and to export. But only the 3%, only the 3% of the Colombian exports goes to Germany, 3%. One or two percent, I don't remember. Let's let's say two percent of the Colombian exports, sorry, go to Israel. So there is a big opportunity. There is a big opportunity. Uh, and you can ask me, Melissa, uh, why only two or three percent? Because if you want to export to that country, you need quality. You need quality. You need to, to do the things in the right way. There is no place for mistakes, think that the product is going to be uh, the medicine for another people. They're going to consume your product. So you, you need to think in terms of quality to, to be very competitive. I saw a lot of companies in Colombia that, is, that have, uh, 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 is cultivated, is, is growing cannabis, but a few, a few, have the quality to say, you know what, I'm going to export to German, uh, Israel, or maybe Switzerland. All of them think in the United States. Why? Because the United States is a no federal regulation in cannabis, in terms of cannabis. So it's easy. It's easy to export, more easy than Europe, for example. But that's the, that's the way that all the companies take. But I think that the blue ocean is going to be in Europe. You need to work thinking in the European market. And I think that that's, you want to be competitive in, in this industry. You, because if you have quality, you have a good price. If you have a good price, you have a good earnings, you have good equity on all the shareholders happy. But if you don't have quality, everyone's 
are more in Colombia. In Colombia, if you say that costs ten dollars, the other people is going to say, "I want to give you five." <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. That's very true. <laughs> So more in Colombia, if you say, hey, I have one kilogram of dry flour, I don't know, $150,000 per kilogram, the other people, you know what, I'm going to give you $50. So it's very difficult to be competitive in this, in this framework. There's a lot of companies with the same quality, with the same approach that you have. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's also, as you said, it's important to think of the big picture, think in the European mindset, because that will be the next kind of market that will be opening up. So we really have to think about this on a global scale, right? Um, so, so talking about the future as well, what do you foresee for the future of your companies, of the Green Services Group and Premium Oil? What are your hopes for the future of your companies? I, I think the... the the cannabis industry is a long-term run, like a marathon. When you start running a marathon, you start with a small step. You start because the run is not going to finish in the next corner. You have 20, 42 kilometers to run. So you, you need to be patient. You need to support. You need to... Uh, Go over the problems you have in the way. If you are tired, you need to stop a little bit, but not stop totally. You need to go down with your run. I think it's the same with the cannabis industry. You need, you are running a marathon, maybe the most important marathon of your life. So you, you, you need to be a patient. There's a lot of problems, a uh, changing framework. Like how I was say before, this this business change every day. So, for example, when I was in Berlin, I was very impressive because I know about the Thailand industry cannabis industry. So, and I remember that when I returned to to Colombia, I take a Google Maps and look for Thailand in the map. They are at the same level of us because when we start, we say, no, we are in the Ecuador, we have the perfect weather. They also have it. They also have it. So you have a new competitor that is working very hard. You are working with a culture that are famous because they are very disciplined, because they are working hard. So you, you, need, to go, you need to be very attentive on that. So you are running a marathon, you, you need to be working every day, you are working every day, giving small steps, but working. See, uh, check the news every day. And I expect that maybe in the five years, in the next five years, finally, the, the industry are more mature than now. Uh, we can expect some equity, some uh, money from the shareholders. But for now, you need to be in the run. You need to be running, running. Doesn't matter that you go first, doesn't matter. In fact, I think that doesn't matter that you are in the, in the at the end, doesn't matter. I think that the, the important thing that are you in the business. All this, working, working, running, running, that finally you are going to see the, the gold banner. I, I love that. And I think that's a really that's a really good metaphor for it because it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So I completely agree. And as long as you're moving forward, you're heading towards that that finish line. Um, talking about events, you know, uh, we were both in Berlin for ICBC. Uh, what about cannabis uh, events in South America? Do you, uh, are there any big ones that are coming up? Um, and do you think that is something that will start to increase in the future as well, um, cannabis events in, in South America? Yes, uh, a few years ago, you only see a one event, no more, a one thing, no more. I remember when I was in a pro-Colombia fair, 
uh, in 2008, 2000, no, it was 2017. Uh, we are looking for investors. Uh, all the people was working, I don't know, in coffee, uh, cacao, other products. And we were the only ones with, with cannabis. So everybody see us look, oh, I don't know, like a drug dealer. Sometimes I feel like <laughs> a drug dealer. <laughs> At the beginning, at the beginning, uh, in, in more than one occasion, I feel like uh, someone uh, shake me like a drug dealer, but that's <laughs> that's not that's not the way. We all, they all, all of us want to do the things in the legal framework, do the right thing. So now you can see, for example, I saw in. At the beginning of November in Argentina, I saw a, a big event of the cannabis industry. Now in Colombia, at the end of November, we have something called Expo Cannabis. I think that that was one of the first ones that start with the with the cannabis fairs. <laughs> so if you, I check the news all days, and all days you see a fair of the cannabis. In, I think. I don't know, maybe it's true or not, but I think that maybe every weekend there's a fair in every uh, cannabis fair in every part of the world. Absolutely, <laughs> I, I think that's accurate. They're popping up everywhere. <laughs> but one of the things that I choose, you, you need to be very selective at time when you sell, select a cannabis fair because uh, you don't have the budget to go to uh, every fair every week. You don't have it. You, it's you very need to, expensive. <laughs> very expensive. So you need to be very selective. And one of the things uh, uh, I like about ECDC was that was a fair for uh, investors. That's what I like. I want to premium oil. I want to, we are working right now in a, in a old brand, or we, I can talk uh, about that because we are developing, we are working on that. So, but what I can say, we want to do a cannabis product, but something different. Every everybody is working uh, in the. I think everybody is working in the same product. So I want to do something different. I want to. To take advantage of my knowledge about coffee, maybe a little about mushrooms, about CBD. I want to mix and take a, a different product, a different kind of product. So that's we are. That's what I choose. ECBC. We are looking for for investors for new project for the next big step of premium oil. Um, because all, all of other fairs are maybe B2B fairs, uh, we don't have yet a product to show. So I, I need to uh, talk with investors, uh, trying to go to Colombia, to invest in Colombia, and uh, develop this new product. I love that. And I think that I think that's very, very true. Um, that we have to be selective and choose the right the right events for what our purpose is. And um good luck with the investments. I'm really excited to see what, what happens next uh, with premium oil. Um sure. uh, is there anything else that you would like to add, Andres, before we before we end off today? Anything else you would like to share about South American cannabis, about your companies, anything else at all? Yes, I uh, I want to say to everybody that that changed his mind about the cannabis. Uh, when you uh, you can tell about someone about only CBD, CBD. This is a CBD product, and say no, this product is maybe is going to uh, put me high. I don't want that. Maybe I'm going to turn into cannabis addict. It's, Sometimes it's funny that the, the things that the people have in his mind. Um, maybe you can understand that. Maybe you can understand that because we come from a country where uh, with a lot of problems with the with the cannabis, the marijuana industry. We, uh, but we are changing that. We are changing. Uh, 
I want to say the people that, that give opportunity to take a cannabis product, and you're going to see all the benefits that this has. And you are supporting a lot of people, you can help a lot of people, and you are helping to grow uh, an industry that is burning. Absolutely, and I totally agree. I think we all have to work towards taking, uh, removing that stigma, because as you said, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to take CBD oil, I'm going to become an, a cannabis yes. addict. That's, that's really funny, because that is something <laughs> I've definitely heard before. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's really true. We have, to, we have only, to kind of change people's minds. <laughs> it's only a few drops on you, uh, in your mouth. It's, no, no, maybe I'm going to need that all the mornings. Uh, you, you, the first thing that I do, I do in the morning is to drink a cup of coffee. It's the first thing. And, and, a, and a coffee addict? No, I am not a coffee addict. If I want, the day that I can take uh, my daily uh, coffee uh, tea, I, 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 doesn't matter. No, no problem. No problem. Exactly. But the people think that they are going to do the... Uh, they're going to turn into Ali. They are going to see, to look like you see in some uh, social media that people is uh, they are staring with their with their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then, but then no, no. they'll drink alcohol and alcohol is fine, you know, <laughs> which is actually way and, more addictive. <laughs> and it's something totally natural, totally 100% natural. You, you, you don't need to be afraid about that. You, you can make a, a tea and it's something natural. It's, it's, you don't have a problem. So that's my advice to the people. That's my advice to the market. Please give the opportunity to taste, to, to try a, a cannabis product, and you're going to see the, the, the difference. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I think that's great advice. Uh, thank you so much for being here today, Andres. I oh, really thank enjoyed you, this. Lisa. Thank you, and, Lisa. And uh, I really I look forward to seeing uh, the, the future of the uh, the South American markets. I think there's going to be some exciting things coming. I will keep up to date on premium oil and uh, the green services group. And I'm looking forward to see what, what comes next. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thanks for... Thank and that's a wrap. Thanks for watching or listening to the Canmar Morning Talk Show. Join us next time for your weekly dose of cannabis and psychedelics updates from the industry's experts. But wait, 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 before you go, did you know that Canmar is leading global change within the cannabis and psychedelics industry? We are building customizable ecosystems, providing solutions to recruitment, offering regulatory and compliance services and building a marketplace and community hub for the global network. Some might say, we are the future. If you haven't already, download the Canmar Hub app or check out our website at canmar.io to see what we're getting up to. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button below to hear more juicy insights from the movers and shakers of the cannabis and psychedelics industry. Until next time, stay dope.